Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? How's everybody doing today? Happy Friday to you. I had the fan on. Did everybody hear the fan? God bless it. It gets hot up here. Uh, and morons sitting here, let the fan on. So you can tell how dialed in I am. And the bird is in this tree outside. Going to get a gun one day and take care of that sucker. We don't promote violence here on the show. When it comes to that freaking bird, you hear him? Oh, my God. All right. Well, we won't go too crazy about that. How's everybody doing out there today? Uh, hope you guys are doing freaking fantastic. Before we bring the guests on, uh, uh, let's say a couple of hello uh, hellos. There it is. And then we'll get into Who was first to the party? Sandy in Germany. What's up, Sandy? How you doing, my friend? Good and talk to you as well. Jamel in Vegas. We got people from all over the world, yo. Don't even play. Carlos Martinez. What's up, my friends? Uh, Down Under, David Down Under is what I call him. He's in Australia. Uh, good to see you, man. Sugar Shane Odom, what's going on? Good to see you, brother. Shannon, what's up? Soundbite Shannon, I call her. There's a reason for that. And man, have I got some sound bites. I got more. That's right. I only do the show to press buttons. If you don't know that yet, you're going to find out. Hope you like it. Uh, what's up, Mark? What's going on, my friend? Elvis Martinez. I still submit best name on the planet. I fight me on that. Will you think of me when Lana wins the Royal Rumble? Elvis, don't make me kick you out of here. I like you, Elvis. Don't make me do anything terrible to you. Elvis has left the building. Don't make me do it, brother. I'll do it. I don't even care. I'm crazy like that. The bird's gonna make me nuts. All right, so we're not gonna waste any more time. Uh, uh, that bird. Can anyone hear the bird? Tell me in the chat right now if you can, because if you say yes, I'm kicking you out. I'm just kidding. I won't do that to you. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and bring our guests on. We've promised them to you all week. And uh, let's get, uh, there's a background I've got. Man, we're, we're trying to spruce the show up here, brother. That's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and do this. First of all, in Chicago, Mr. Phil Lindsay, and in England, all the way across the pond, at least from me and Phil, it's Troy Grant. Welcome, gentlemen, back to Tom Clark's main event. There's the mics. Your mics were off. Who did that? <laughs> Let's try again. Welcome, gentlemen, to Tom Clark's main event. What's up, man? It must have been that bird that I heard. It's the damn bird. You <laughs> called it. Troy called it. <laughs> you got a long range weapon on you, Troy. Let's take care of that bird. <laughs> Super inter <laughs> ballistic, ballistic range, uh, whatever the word is. So, um, uh, yeah, volume's on. Everybody's good. Uh, hey, kids, this is Phil and Troy. Troy and Phil, here are the kids. Everybody say hey to Phil and Troy for crying out loud. Make everybody feel welcome. So, there we go. Um, <laughs> Ray is, uh, Phil Ray's giving you uh, 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 props. So happy you like Kobe and Adam Cole. Ray, I got something for you, baby. You want me to just hit you with it right now? Because I promised you last week. Who's ready for a button? <clears throat> if I can get my words out. Ray, this is for you, baby. <laughs> Shut up. Is that fun or what? Ray, you're so welcome. Just, just what I thought you couldn't get any better with those little sound bites. You, you come at us with that. <laughs> I, I dread the moment when I push a button and somebody in the chat goes, well, that was terrible. That was God off. <laughs> what were you the hell was that? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 What were you thinking? You wasted your time and hours both. So um, usually we do a ticker at the bottom, but I, I fear the ticker may cover up Troy and we don't want to be rude to our guest. So I don't think the banners will. Uh, if you guys showed up today to this show to get a Royal Rumble preview, man, are you in luck. All you WWE fans are going to be over the moon because we're going to lead off with that sucker. And man, have we got stuff to talk about today. Um, let's go ahead and get with, just get with it, man. Don't waste any more time. The men's Royal Rumble. And not even covering up Troy. That's perfect. 
Oh, awesome. I love when oh. stuff works. See? <laughs> it, it's your money, Troy. This is the money. You, you can't That's cover it, that up. You see what no. I'm saying? There no, you go. Don't play this. <laughs> <laughs> I often say I've I often say I've got a face made for radio, so I'm doing this show. You know, we'll, we'll oh, see. come on. There now. you go. <laughs> oh man, I did trend the beard. Okay, this thing was out of control, and I'm, I'm telling my wife, I'm like, I think I should dye it. There's a lot of gray happening. She's like, God, don't dye it unless you can do it right, because it's gonna look. You'd be like solid brown, and then like pepper up here, salt and pepper. <laughs> and I don't want. It's like a reverse Reed Richards or something. I don't want to do that. So you're gonna get your Card- Cardona going. <laughs> oh my god, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that recent <laughs> picture was it Vladimir Kozlov? The picture that came with him the other day. Yes. There's, there's a jet black beard. He looks like one of those guys who gives you the side missions in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Get the flowered shirt and stuff. That's it. All smiling. <laughs> he must be doing well. That smile, there's that mm. smile says nothing except I'm doing really well. You know what I mean? So there's, there's money in these teeth. <laughs> that's right. That that sh- that uh, that shirt says everything. You got the the guts to wear that shirt in public. There you go. <laughs> so, some minerals <laughs> that's right yeah I, what what's his gig now i didn't even read the thing what's he doing no idea I it's like a drink or something or energy I, drink what was it i think so it, yeah some sort of beverage <laughs> whatever it was he was selling the hell out of it <laughs> some sort of beverage i like that <laughs> it, it wouldn't be great if the bottle said some sort of beverage on it He's some like sort that. Of beverage <laughs> it's great um there are 17 men announced for the men's Royal Rumble. Um, Randy Orton, Edge, AJ Styles, Big E. Everybody write this down. Everyone take notes. There's a <laughs> quiz later. Orton, Edge, AJ, Big E, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, Jeff Hardy, Bobby Lashley, Jey Uso, Cesaro, The Miz, John Morrison, Otis, Sami Zayn, Nakamura, Dolph Ziggler, Mustafa Ali, and a partridge in a pear tree. Um <laughs> 17 people, and it's a traditional 30 man, I assume, this year. Mm-hmm. They're not going to do something crazy like 50 or some nonsense. The, the greatest Royal Rumble ever. None of that nonsense. No, I, well, I forgot, <laughs> Troy. Thanks a lot. So, you know, <laughs> you just managed to erase that from your mind. <laughs> yes, like yesterday. And then, bam, Troy comes along and screws it all up. <laughs> um, Phil, let's start with you. I, I, I don't want to say give me your pick. How about give me your take on this match before we start picking anybody? What's your thoughts on this thing right off the bat? Uh, I would say this is the most unpredictable it's been in a while. Like, I don't think anybody stands out. Um, I mean, like Nakamura just made a lot of momentum. I could see him winning. Uh, Daniel Bryan, I could see him winning as well. But it's up in the air as far as I'm concerned. I agree with that. And, you know, it seems like we say that all the time, but this year, and the last time I said it, I was like, this really feels like it's unpredictable. But again, this really feels unpredictable. I got, I got nobody. Troy, what do you think? Um, I know who I want to win it, but this is, and I've been saying the same thing to friends. This genuinely feels like the first rumble in years where it is wide open and unpredictable. I'd say there's, six at least standouts where you could argue a case that any one of them deserves to win it. Um, They've been clearly giving Cesaro a bit of momentum going in. Daniel Bryan is a massive shout for it. Um, Jey Uso feeling like coming in under like some sort of level of like tomfoolery and, oh, we're going to put you in at number 30 or something like that. Like Heyman's pull some strings backstage. Like anything could happen. Like there's, there's so many people in there that over the last two, three weeks, they've all made them feel like, oh, okay, I'll take notice of them. Okay, they feel like they could win it. Just, yeah, it's exciting. I, don't, I haven't been as excited for a, a Rumble for a little while just because it could be anyone. And I think I said last week on the show that um, I, I posed the question about Cesaro. Is he only looking good because of the Rumble? Like, did he only go over because of the Rumble? Is he only looking strong because of the Rumble? Hmm. Like, they do tend a lot of fire on these guys in the week leading up the weeks leading up to the Royal Rumble. So it makes perfect sense because they're trying to give you the impression that everybody's got a shot to win this mm-hmm. thing, right? So um speaking of Cesaro, this is the eternal question. I don't know if it'll ever be answered. Solid, reliable, the, the number one most important trait in any any professional wrestler on any level in any company is he reliable? Is he or she reliable? Cesaro is reliable. Every time his number's called. And he gets in that ring, he delivers every single time. I don't know if a time that he hasn't, but you know, eternal question time is is 
is he going to have his time? Is this just another tease? I mean, Phil, what do you think? Is this par for the course and he'll be back down to doing nothing or we just have to wait and see? Yeah, uh, I feel like he's kind of in that Rusev category where we want him to be world champion so bad, but I just don't think they believe in him enough to make him world champion. Um, it should have happened a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I just don't see it happening. I just, at least, at least not this year. Troy, did they miss an opportunity when they put Heyman with him by not moving forward with it then? Mm, they did, but then arguably they've had countless times after that. And I think one of the biggest reasons is that his first language isn't English. And for some reason, that's a big thing. And yet the guy speaks six languages. Yeah. He speaks better English than a lot of people whose first language is English on the roster. Yeah, like yeah. he's got everything. And it's so frustrating to see someone like that, like you say, that has everything and is such a, a reliable worker and performs every single time to keep falling by the wayside. And like you say, like it, it could just be another tease. I feel like him in the Rumble this year, I don't think he's going to win it, but I think he's going to have a really strong showing. It wouldn't surprise me if you see him in the last four, but I think he's he's going to go in there to, to, to really show out. And I guess really with this company, we have kind of all learned to take what, what we can get for these guys. I mean, if you – if you fall in love with the worker, as so many of us have with Cesaro, and before when he was in Ring of Honor, to be fair, um, you know, you, you sort of take what you can get. You take your small victories as they come, which kind of sounds like the explanation of Mustafa Ali, um, mm. where it's like, well, we'll take what we can get. He continues to be one of the best promos on that show and online. But, you know, I'm, I don't want this to become a bash retribution thing, but – you know, if you, if you guys are here and got nothing else to do, let's do some retribution bashing. He looks great. He sounds great. But, man, uh, why not put him – Phil, maybe this is an obvious question. Um, when he was on his own, you weren't doing anything with him. So now that at least he's got something to do, not if, but when this retribution thing goes away, hopefully soon, slapjack. I got one word for you. Slapjack. A grown <laughs> man. <laughs> Grown man is telling me this is slapjack, pal. Slapjack. <laughs> slap I nuts. Just, <laughs> slap nuts. Yeah. I would, well, I would, those I'd names are that. atrocious. Yeah. yeah. And it's like slapjack, monkey ranch, manhole cover. I don't know. I don't know what they're all they're called. It's ridiculous. Cheese grater, Lord. Cheese Noah. grater. <laughs> Rope swing. I don't know. Pick a name. Any <laughs> rope name. Rope <swing's> best. <laughs> Even rope swing doesn't fit and fits at the same time. <laughs> so, Phil, if and when this thing ends, is he going to be better? Is it going to be, well, we're going to give you this. We're going to see how you do. Or am I just, you know, spitting in the wind and, and not really sure because we don't really know? What do you think? I don't know. He's another one where I feel like he's got so much potential and he should be a baby face. I mean, we, I mean, this guy is babyface Ronaldo. I mean, he's he's he cuts great promos. Um, he's such a likable guy, and you know, he's a guy that stands for something as well. That should be a guy that should be at the top of your card. It's the same when Sami Zayn was in that same vein. You got a guy that's a legitimately good guy in real life, and people want to root for him. Why is he a bad guy? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the weird thing about Sami Zayn is. Outside of wrestling, he's one of the nicest people going, and yet he couldn't be any more the opposite the way they portray him. It's mad. And it's the same with Ali. Yeah, it's like, let's take the one thing that really, really works, and let's – this is off topic, but if anybody has been noticing Bad Luck Fale on Instagram, it's phenomenal. He's giving, like, life advice, like, as a person and not a character – Talking about how to go look it up. It's great. Talking about how to talk to your son and your daughter and and giving life. Like if if life gets you down, you got to get yourself up. And I keep waiting for the punchline. There's no punchline. It's just him as a person. And I'm like, why are you not putting this on TV? Because it's great stuff. You know, it's just an example of how someone's personality is A plus. And then you like, well, you got to put this thing on and go out there and, and get mad at people and spit at them and like, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like it worked for Brody Lee. It works for a lot of guys, but Ali, you know, Phil, to your point, Ali is a, a tremendous uh, baby face. Ray. I see something. Sorry, man. I see something happening. Like we were saying, if had a couple of friends with like with Ali and the rumble, if he enters that, 
and he goes the whole CM Punk route and he uses the rest of retribution like Nexus and he just sits there and lets people eliminate them for him while he just cuts a promo. I'd like to see that. That'd be yeah. amusing. I don't hate that at all. Um, Ray, I gave you a button and you're giving me this. I heard Cena is in it. Could he win? <laughs> Phil, what do you think? It's, it says everything, doesn't it, that we just asked, like, what is Cesaro's chances of winning? But I feel like Edge has a better chance of winning. And that kind of says everything about how WWE does things. They always put guys that are old-timers before guys that are on the roster that have potential. Um, and Cena's in the same vein. Like, if he's in the match, why would you want Cena to win the match? What does that do for you? <laughs> on the flip side of that, though, and we were saying about, like, a couple of friends talking the other day about Goldberg and just saying, like, they're going to do it, aren't they? They're going to have him beat Drew. Like, why are they bring him back an old-timer to make their current talent look less? Like, that should be the opposite of what, like, a legend comes back to do. They should be there to elevate the talent. At least with someone like Edge coming back, even if he did win the Rumble, in the long term, he's going to be there to put someone over. Goldberg's not there to do that. Cena coming back would be there to eventually elevate someone, whether he won it or not. But people like that, there's a difference between people like that coming back and people like Goldberg coming back. He's not there to make anyone look better. And no one wants that there. Whereas Edge winning it, yeah, people are going, okay, it's an older guy winning it. It's a, a legend coming back to win it. But he's he's one of the, he's like a, I think he's working as like a producer or a writer or something. And I know him and, and Daniel Bryan over on SmackDown are working kind of hard to push a lot of guys and, and really elevate some of his younger talent. So even if he did win it, like it's in the best interest of everyone else, eventually it's going to be there to put someone over. And, you know, I'm, I've never been that guy to kind of, uh, I don't want to say bash them, but, but throw stones and say, Oh, here we go. Bringing the part-time veterans back again for WrestleMania. I don't know that I've ever done that a lot because I get it. It's WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. You want to get the, the buys. You want to get spotlight. You want to get mainstream coverage, especially now with the COVID thing. And, and you want to be sure you're getting as many faces and eyes on the product as possible. Eh, whatever. And I'm sure the talent that already there know that. However, in 2021, yeah, I, I'm at this point, I'm like, and, you know, I ranted about this uh, on the show. I think, uh, Phil, when you were on, I believe. Um, the whole thing about the whole direction for Goldberg, man, and we'll get there. We'll get there here so soon. But just to throw it out there, the whole direction of he comes out, you disrespected the, the veterans. What? What? Like, never happened. And you notice in the playback of the montage of them hyping this match, they've cut all that stuff out. Because mm -hmm. at some point, one of them said, hey, you know, that doesn't fit. You want to just cut that? All right, let's <laughs> cut it. And they get cut it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, get rid yeah. of it. Because it's what, terrible. Wasn't the rumor that the match went on too long and um, Drew was supposed to cut a promo after the match that was supposed to lead to Goldberg's mat, uh, promo? Yeah. It was weird. Like, there was something that happened. It was a lot of it to do with this kind of last-minute writing and script changes as well that seemed to be a constant thing. And it was Orton that was disrespecting the legends the whole night. And yet right. Goldberg comes out and he's like, Drew, you've been disrespecting people. Like, Sorry, how have you got him confused with him? <laughs> and yeah, apparently he was meant to cut a promo afterwards. But then why would you have your, your champion, your baby face champion, cut a heel promo against Legends, who he's clearly said in the past he respects, just to get a match of Goldberg? It makes zero sense. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, no. There, there's no direction there. There's no end game there at all. There's no ultimate destination. Before we get to picks... I'm going to throw this up from Marcus. Samoa Joe leaves the broadcast team to join Royal Rumble and wins it to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Please, yes, please. What do yes. you think? Yes. I want Samoa Joe to win a world title so bad. I mm. thought he should have beat Brock for the universal title. I thought that was yeah. a big missed opportunity. Yeah. I want that man to be a world title holder so bad. How, and, how has he not been? It's mad. Like, you look how he was booked on, like, NXT when he was champion and his feud back and forth with him and Balor. And he looked like an animal. And even that stuff that he did later on when he came on and it was him and AJ Styles and that whole thing there was so good. He should have had title put on him ages ago. And his direction now, his his pitch now could be, I've sat at that table for six months and I've watched every one of you. I've been scouting everybody in this company on this brand for the last six months, choosing when to, to strike. And I've chose the Royal rumble. And now that title's coming to me. Yes. You know, 
book it like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, if you still want to do the Samoan culture stuff, you got Samoa Joe. You can. You, there's directions you can go in with that. Yeah. There's some it's Joe too, versus Joe at Mania. <laughs> it's too early for Roman and Rock, and I don't know if it's ever going to be time for Roman and Rock, especially in front of no people. And they keep saying, "Well, we're going to fill up WrestleMania." Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> can you envision two months from now being like, man, this COVID thing, we pretty much got it licked. Let's just get 50,000 people in here. <laughs> Is everybody feeling good? Let's just do this. I don't see that. No, no chance. No, especially after your, your champion just got COVID. Like, no, it's not a good <laughs> exactly, idea. Exactly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, I know the rock came out and said something recently. Like I'd like it to happen, but it's not going to be this year. Like, I, I don't know. What, well, partly, obviously, with COVID and everything, but obviously, like, filming, scheduling, like, yeah. conflicts and stuff like that. And I know there was a big thing a while ago, like, a few years ago, where he was filming something and he made an appearance, like, in WWE and got injured yeah. as a result. And then yeah. it halted filming. So now it's like a kind of pre clause in a lot of his contracts. It's mm -hmm. like no physical wrestling appearances because it halts production on films. And if that he's was, doing. That was the match with Cena when he tore his abdomen, wasn't it? When he came. Yeah, Cena. That's it. Yeah. He came off the top, or I forget what the move was, and it, it messed him up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I call this bit want versus wackadoodle. <laughs> so what this means is, who would you who do you want to win it versus what's your wackadoodle choice? Which essentially means Vince's choice. <laughs> Let's be honest. Phil, don't bow your head. You know I'm right. <laughs> all right phil give me your want and your wackadoodle for the men's royal rumble and keep in mind we don't know everybody that's going to be in it yet um my want is i would really like Big E to win um if goldberg does win he is the only opponent that should face goldberg at wrestlemania mm -hmm. he's been he's been saying he wants that match for a long long time big meaty men slapping meat together let's make this happen <laughs> <laughs> Big man bumping meat. <laughs> his his words, not mine. <laughs> Come on, man. Big oh, see, there you go. It's a whole uh, different kind of podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> um, wackadoodle. Um, I could totally see Vince thinking, "All right, let's let's bring in somebody random out of left field, some like." Part timer to come back and win, but I, I think their choice is is got to be either Daniel Bryan or um that uh, Daniel Bryan's the only other person that stands out at this point that could have that match with Roman. Um, so I'm guessing like my one is Biggie, Wackadoodle is uh, Daniel Bryan. Even though I wouldn't have a problem with Daniel Bryan winning. Same here. What do you think, Troy? Uh, I pretty much agree with Phil, to be fair. Big E is my absolute first choice to win the Rumble. Push him, give him the world title run that he absolutely deserves. Um, and like you say, like he's been petitioning for ages to face Goldberg. So if Goldberg does beat Drew, there it is. WrestleMania, Big E Goldberg. Um, Wackadoodle choice. I don't know. Vince is, is, a, is a crazy man. I see him pulling something silly out of the bag. Like, let's have Goldberg beat Drew, and then win the Rumble, and then unify the championships to really put him over <laughs> and be a hero for the kids. Um, just nonsense like that. Um, nah, but on a serious one, I agree with Phil. I wouldn't have a problem with Daniel Brown winning it, but I feel like that's where they're going. Either him or AJ Styles. Saying that, AJ apparently doesn't get on with Heyman, so I don't know how that would work. Interesting. Um yeah, a lot of the politics backstage can either catapult you quick or stop you dead in your tracks. I, th I think there's a lot of stuff there to do with Daniel. There's a lot of symmetry. There's a lot of echoes of Daniel and Roman when Roman was hated and Daniel was white hot and they wanted him to win the Rumble that year and he wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something to play off of. And I don't know of in this day and age, who a better baby face is. I mean, Daniel is your Ricky Steamboat. He's the guy that, yeah, I mean, Daniel had heel runs, and they were awesome. But mm -hmm. in, in terms of how could anyone in that crowd not be on Daniel's side? And if they're not, shame on them because they're dumb. He's, he's great. <laughs> I mean. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it say everything about this that the year that Daniel Bryan finally wins the Rumble like we want, there's no crowd. <laughs> oh, my God. 
I mean, um, you're yeah. right, man. Yeah. I mean, how how uh, this is kind of a broad question, and and it's kind of covering the whole conversation today, but. Is it going to be a bummer to watch this with like, you know, people counting down, you know, they're going to have a piped in countdown. Yeah. And stuff. I mean, but it's not going to be the same, right? Is it going to ruin it for you? Just kind of, kind of try to put down a back burner and just enjoy it for what it is. I mean, I've only got last year's, well, I've got many years compared to, but I compare it to last year because I went to last year's rumble. So I'm just like, well, the real crowd isn't there. And, but I don't know. I'll be screaming from my couch, the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Phil? Does it put a damper on it for you? It puts a little bit of a damper on it. Um, I think just, you know, a big part of Rumble is, you know, getting into it with the crowd when mm -hmm. someone comes out and, you know, yeah. being able to, you know, count down with the crowd. Um, but, I mean, it's still Royal Rumble. To me, it's still the most exciting pay-per-view of the year. Um, it's probably the most easily accessible WWE pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's still going to be fun. Yeah, and. Cool. Easily accessible is a great point. It's kind of like Royal Rumble is maybe an evergreen event where if you haven't been watching in a few months, you can just – good point. You can just jump back in and catch up. Yeah. Um, let's get to the ladies Royal Rumble. Hello, ladies. We got women <laughs> watch the show, man. I got some female fans. We're going to find some here. Women <laughs> – ladies, don't let me down. Hello, Alma. Alma says Keith Lee and Alexa Bliss, winners of the Royal Rumbles. I wouldn't mind, Keith. I love Keith. Um, I mean, prove, the last four. prove to me for 10 minutes that you're going to do something with him instead of just messing with me. Mm. Exactly. I'm just saying. Um, Say that. Where's he been? He's not been on TV for the last couple of years. Since Drew went off with the Rona, he's not been seen either. But it's weird because then his partner's been on TV. So that's what I don't get. Like, where is he? Give me yeah. more Keith Lee. <laughs> yeah and it could just be that uh uh maybe he's got a like a slight injury they're not talking about it i mean it could be anything like that mm -hmm. um so here are the women announced and there's like three of them <laughs> for the women's royal rumble you've got tamina ruby riot Liv morgan Shayna baszler alexa bliss peyton royce dana brooke mandy rose bailey bianca belair charlotte flair and nia Jax. There's my look for that one. <laughs> Come on now. It's Bianca Valera all day. It's got to be. Go it's ahead. Be. All right. So, so there's your heading there, Troy. So, want versus wackadoodle. You, you want Bianca? You think that's a logical choice? I want Bianca Valera. And I think they'll go with Bianca Valera. Well, they're saying that Charlotte said she's going to be in it. So, Never bet against Charlotte. She's she's not come back <laughs> to to see the lights as she like. She's not taking a pin. She she's been no selling for the last couple of weeks and making everyone she's been in the ring with look appalling and herself. She's Hot going take. to she's going into business for herself. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they gave her a back to back win, but I want Bianca Bella for sure. Phil, that's a hot take. You agree with Troy on the Charlotte thing? Uh. Yeah, you know, I don't want to jump all over Charlotte. I know she gets jumped on a lot online, but I just think the way they use her, it's kind of hard not to see why people don't necessarily like her push. And I don't want to say not like her because she's great. Like, she's talented. Um, she's great as a heel. I don't like her as a baby face. Sorry, I just don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, the way they use her is very similar to how they were trying to force us to like Roman for a long time, and it's just not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, so, it's a right. weird thing with her character where she's like, not a weird thing, but it's how they're trying to perceive her of this. And we've been calling her for a couple of weeks on our podcast as uh, like relatable, like baby face Charlotte Flair. And she's not at all like her whole gimmick is that she's entitled. Why would that make her a face? It makes her a heel. She's a heel by default. So don't force it, force us to like her. Yeah. Her whole, her whole character is I am genetically superior to you. So yeah. why would we like her? She's not relatable at all. S sympathetic baby face. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't get it. And since we are jumping on Charlotte, I'm going to do it too. I'm not. Uh, we're not. Everybody relax. It's a joke, kids. Relax. <laughs> but explain to me why I'm supposed to be mad at Rick. When Rick was essentially told, screw off, uh, I don't love you, and, and, and you weren't there, and you're not my real daddy, or whatever's going on. And 
<laughs> and I don't know. And uh, and and he's that last on Monday. He's like, he's like, look, just because you don't want my advice, you know, it doesn't mean somebody else doesn't. He's not sexing up Lacey. Everybody wants it to be that. Oh, look what he's got. Come on, come on. I mean, that was the most heartfelt thing said on that show Monday, and it felt real. Like. Just because you don't want my advice doesn't mean I can't have somebody else. What's wrong? What's your problem? And mm. she's like, I'm not the bad guy. I'm like, yes, you are. You're yes, you are. Dead. A thousand Just percent the bad guy. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even understand the angle of her going, I don't need your, your help, Rick. I'm not like you. You spent the beginning of your, your time on the main roster with him by your side and cheating. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you use his music. You wear his robe. Yes. Your attire is the same. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Come on. <laughs> yes, every everything's the same. And let's not forget this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that fit perfect. Uh, <laughs> she does it constantly. I'm not. I'm not you. What? Yeah. Oh my. The finishing move is her dad's move. It's just slightly adapted. Yeah, I, oh, I, don't, man. I can't get mad at her. I, 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 it's like they're all handed stuff and say, "Hey, go out there and say that, would you?" By the way, no one's over here. It's just me being in character. Everybody gets that right. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, it just—I I mean, even the whole—you know, my best friend Oscar. You guys are not friends. Nope. Like nothing about your relationship together. Since you guys had that match at Mania, it's friendly. Why are you trying to get us to buy into this friendship? Like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and when, not if, but when the moment comes that Charlotte stabs her in the back, this won't happen because they want it to play out the way they want it to play out. And Oscar look like a freaking moron because Oscar looks like a moron all the time because of booking. Uh, <laughs> but it, what would be awesome is if the moment she's going to do it, Oscar turns it on her. And doesn't turn heel, but just is basically like, did you really think I was going to fall for that? Do you think I've fallen for any of this over the past year? Are you crazy? I know who you are. Like, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Charlotte it thinks would. she's going to dig her claws in. Oscar's like, uh-uh, no, I've, I've already planned for this. You've lost your mind if you think I'm going to fall for that. Yeah. That Somebody, it uh, <laughs> yeah, it gives her an edge. It gives, it makes her smart and looks smart for a change. Ryan, mm-hmm. preach, Ryan. Preach, what's the chances? Becky's Ooh. ready. Ooh, and she I don't know. Up. What I do we don't think? See it. Nah, not yet. It's too soon. Yeah, okay. it might be an might be an appearance. I don't think she's going to be in the rumble. You guys are crapping on. I want this to happen. Just make it happen. I, I, I think like- we got more of a chance of seeing Rollins, honestly. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I kind of forgot about Seth. Isn't that man? Does that say something that I kind of forgot about Seth? I mm-hmm. haven't because Raw has been not as great without him. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I guess my wants just to be different. I would love it if, if Bianca won. Um, just to be different, Rhea Ripley should win this thing. Get her off NXT. There's nothing left for her to do on NXT. Mm-hmm. Move her up. The only thing I don't want to admit about her winning the Rumble you're going to have to put the title back on Charlotte just to get that storyline back mm-hmm. at WrestleMania mm-hmm. and possibly give Rhea the win that she deserved last year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Breach. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, it seems, talk about wackadoodle, it seems such a tremendous waste of time mm-hmm. to spend 12 months going, did we do the right thing? Should we have put Charlotte over? Hey, we could just take it back at Mania. Let's just put it back like it never happened. Let's just do a do-over, guys, and we'll just – I don't know. It seems like well, – let's do it that way to begin with. Yeah, I know, but at least, like, that would be a great way to move her up. Um, we've never had anyone from NXT win a Rumble, and, you know, having her go back to WrestleMania that way would be interesting. Um, Wackadoodle, I feel it's coming a mile away. Lex is going to win a Rumble. I can just feel it coming. There's no way you book her the way you have for the last two weeks and put her in this match believably and have her lose. It how? Mm. Um, I don't care for the demonic no selling stuff. I hate the way that it makes Oscar look. I just don't like it. Yeah, yeah, you could have done that with anyone else. Nikki Cross is not on TV. Why can't you have those same matches with Nikki Cross? Why do you have to have your champion look like a loser? I don't like it. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like this is going to be an easy way to 
either have Alexa win the Rumble and beat Oscar like we know they want to do, or take the title off of Oscar before Mania and have Alexa go against someone else. I don't know, but I feel like Alexa is the favorite. She has to be a favorite to win. Also, she's got three chances of entering. Are we going to get the three faces of Bliss like, <laughs> oh, like Mick Foley? <laughs> oh, please no. Please, oh, please. boy. Wow. It's going to happen. Hot take. <laughs> First of all, that was tremendous. Uh, kudos to you. Second, I don't want that to happen. Uh, third, I totally see it happening. Because here's all I'm saying to you. If I got to watch one more moment on that freaking show with that chick with the eyeliner staring a hole through the camera, just yeah, you know, it's almost like they're and I, Alexa. When you get out there and you grab Oscar, you be sure you stare at the camera for five minutes. We're going to time you. You just stare right at it and just dead eyes, uh, Alexa, dead eyes and action and like, oh my yep. god, we get it. You're crazy. I don't know. Yeah, who? And sure Nikki knows about everything, don't they? And Phil, to your point, Nikki does a much better crazy than Alexa. Does. She does. I I miss NXT Nikki so much. Mm. I agree yeah. with that. Um, I just saw a good one, and I've missed it. <laughs> I've, oh, oh, Ryan. Ryan Evans. Ryan, have you watched the show before? Tessa Blanchard is rumored to be in the Royal Rumble. I said this last week, and it bears repeating because evidently nobody heard me. Just sign her. For God's sake, I don't care if she signs with Vince, Tony Khan, freaking Impact, freaking, you know, Freedom Hall Championship Wrestling or National Guard, National Guard Armory Championship Wrestling. Much love to everybody on the indie circuit. I'm with you. But please, for God's sake, somebody sign us. So I have to quit answering these questions because at this point, I don't care what she does. Am I is it, Am I alone in this or what? I, I mean, it's obvious someone's going to sign her. Um, it's going to happen. I don't, I hope nobody is sitting around like, oh, we're done with Tessa Blanchard. That's over with. No, no, somebody's gonna sign her. So, my my guess is WWE. Um, I think that the thought of having her in marquee matches with the horsewomen is too much to pass up. Um, there's too much story you can do there, there's too much lineage there. They're gonna do it eventually. Yeah. Um, do I think it's this year? No, I think Ty Valkyrie is a closer shot this year. I could see her being in a rumble before Tessa Blanchard. And uh, it's funny, Troy, that uh, if if Phil's right, and I don't know if we have any reason to believe he's not right, it seems that maybe Impact doesn't have those 90-day no-compete clauses because if they do, which I'm guessing they don't, but mm. if they did, there's no way she could be there. So, no. you know, uh, it seems like they're all teasing it on Impact that week, too, that she's gone and she's going there. Yeah. So. yeah. it's I think the thing with her is obviously – she comes with a lot of baggage and yeah i know there's obviously some people that are still just like nope no way but it was she's too much of a talent to pass up on and wwe seems like the one company where if someone's got a bit of a, a history they're willing to gloss over it in some way or another and we've seen that with numerous other people so mm -hmm. i think she'll go there but i agree with phil i think it might be too soon I mean, yeah. Velvet Velveteen Dream still has a job, guys. That's all Velveteen I'm saying. Dream still there, buddy. Yeah. Still yeah. trying to put Riker on TV like nothing happened. We so does Lars Sullivan. So does Jackson Riker. Yeah. <laughs> we still got tons of uh, questionable people on NXT UK that are still there. So Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've told this story on the show before. Jackson Riker is a North Carolina guy. And uh, uh, his uncle – small world actually used to work for me in my civilian job. We were coworkers. And so I knew him back when he was still NWA world champion. Uh, and he worked for a company that I'm now with. And so I, this is back when he was gunner in TNA and he could not have been nicer to me in the locker room. We talked about family and work and stuff and I asked him how he was doing. And, and uh, uh, I said, they're calling you gunner. How you feel about that? And he's like, brother, pay me. You can call me wherever you want to. I don't care. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you know, so I never really had a problem with him. And then all of a sudden people's politics start coming out over the years. And you're like, oh, that's a bad look. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I I'll, listen, no disrespect to anybody here, but uh, or anybody I'm talking about right now. But, you know, your your political beliefs and opinions are not mine. So, you know, that's all I'll say about that. Um, yeah, you're right, Phil. He's still there. Uh, Dream's still there. I mean, uh, someone remind me, is Lars gone or is he still there? I can't remember. He's still there, I think. 
I wonder if he's in the rumble. Being a rumble now that I think oh, about God. it. Oh God! Oh <laughs> God! I'm so sorry. It's my fault for bringing it up. I, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, where's where's Braun? We haven't seen Braun in a minute either. Braun's been rehabbing a knee injury. I think it's an injury. I think it's a knee, but he is looking lean. If you seen any of the pictures she's put recently on Instagram, he is shredded. Okay, Ryan won the pony. Tom, I saw a picture of Nia Jax the other day, and for some reason, I got injured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Ryan wins the no prize for today's show. Check the mailbox; it's on the way. Well done, Ryan. That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even. I don't, that's it. Good night, folks. We're done. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Sugar Shane tries to ruin it for us by saying, surprise women's entrant, Eva Marie. Oh, God, no. (laughs) Please, no. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so uh, everything being, uh, 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 everything, uh, all right, so quick story time, everything being fair. Candace Michelle was atrocious. Candace Michelle was... uh, Hot garbage! (laughs) You knew I had to get it on eventually, right? (laughs) She was, she was steaming pile of it the thing with the twirl and i'm like if she does that twirl one more time i'm gonna pull my own eyes out (laughs) and then candace learned how to work Mm -hmm. and then it got to be damn she's pretty she's getting pretty good and then fast forward six months later god dude she's really good Mm -hmm. like and i was crazy impressed so eva marie at this moment last time we saw her hot garbage so i'm (laughs) gonna reserve judgment for all we know, she's she's training with you know Finley or something, and punching women in the face. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> and listen, if I'm wrong, I love Phil's expression. Phil's like, "What Finley? Well, get out of here!" Um, <laughs> if I'm wrong, so be it. I'll be the first one to say oh, I shouldn't have given this girl the benefit of the doubt. But hey, man, we've seen weirder stuff. I don't know. Maybe she'll be great, or am I just delusional? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, speaking of, because, you know, Legend's coming back. If any Legend comes back, it should be Jazz. She says she's retiring. Get her in this match. I don't know why she hasn't had a return match with WWE. This is the year to do it. Yeah. She's doing like a retirement tour because she was meant to retire properly and then the pandemic hit and she didn't get a chance to do it, like to do it properly, have a proper send off. So, yeah, Yeah. why not? Like this part of a retirement tour, one last hurrah in the Rumble. Love to see that. I love that. I love that. That's a great idea, man. Let's make that happen. We've kind of already touched on this, but let's get to the rest of the card because there's a big card. There's really not. That was humor. <laughs> Flair and Asuka versus Baszler and Jax. Uh, so any thoughts on this? Maybe the better question is, do I care? Or maybe the better statement is, yawn. What do you got for me? I want to like the women's tag titles. Other companies are doing great things with women's tag team wrestling. The knockout tag titles are off to a great start. Mm-hmm. Big fan of Fire and Flavor. Um, love what Stardom does with tag team wrestling. I don't know why this is so hard for WWE. Put together teams that are tag teams and make them your champions. Stop trying to put together singles wrestlers that are going in different directions in the night and yeah. trying to put them together as a tag yeah. team. <laughs> or- how about this? Here's a thought. Stop breaking up your existing women's tag teams. What was wrong with the Iconics? Nothing. How much they... time you got? Oh, my God. What was <laughs> – what? I know you're speaking from a gimmick perspective, but if we're going to talk about in-ring work, where's my button? You made me do this, Troy. This is all your fault. Hot garbage. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to let you do that because Peyton <laughs> is actually good. Peyton, Peyton is a good wrestler. Good. Okay. She all is right. good. She is good. But her but, partner's uh, better on the mic than she is wearing a pair of tights in the ring, for God's sake. But that's why she's there. Like, we see that now. She's the She was the entire character of that group. She was she, what she, made that group funny. It's like Martin and Lewis, yeah. right? She's like the the R-Truth of the women's division. She's the oh comic relief. God. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, her, her throwing that tantrum when they lost the titles is still classic. <laughs> It's iconic, you could say. Oh man, I'll Ooh. see myself out. I'll see myself out. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for joining, <laughs> Troy. Jeez, uh, that, that was so much on the nose. I about blacked out from it. <laughs> With these women's tag titles, I want, and like you said, Phil, like 
I want to like them, I want to take them seriously. Just have the women's tag titles in NXT. They're already shown with the women's Dusty Cup that there's some decent tag teams in there, some great tag Yeah, tag teams would be better in the NXT. Yeah, do it. Just go. put it there. Put it there. Well, well and done. I hate this whole, oh, they can be they can be defended across all brands. When was the last time you saw them defended on NXT? Which when? has more actual tag teams than Raw and SmackDown combined. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when the people that actually push for these titles to exist had them and they were taking them to every brand and making them matter. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't like this team of Flair and Oscar, but they're going to win. Nia and, ba- and Baszler aren't going to win. Um, this is just keeping this Flair and Oscar team going longer, which I don't want it to be a thing, but we're stuck with it for now until she either turns on Oscar or they lose the titles. Um, I don't know where we go from here, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> have, have Jackson Baszler lose this, Flair and Oscar retain. This loss for Jackson Baszler causes them to split up and we get Baszler having the decent singles run that she deserves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because she's That's been kind the, of a she's been a punch line since she got to the main roster, right? She's done nothing. Well, they the elimination chamber last year, they made it like an absolute animal, like she eliminated everyone. Yeah, like the first person to do that, and then they just went cold on her instantly yeah 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 they picked they picked the wrong winners for both title matches mm-hmm. <laughs> at at uh at mania i mean I other than daily winning ray yeah. says Jax is horrible worker she hurt brooke what? ray uh, Jax hurt me Jax has hurt everybody are you kidding me <laughs> well to be fair to naya on this one she has oh my god more. tread lightly you're gonna be fair to naya do it go well, to be fair to her, I don't think this was as bad as some of the other things she's done. I thought no, she hit the ground pretty hard, but yeah. we've got to stop acting like the women can't take a take, can't take a bump. She can take that bump, um, and Dana took it like a champ. Um, if this is if this is Aja Kong and some like Joshi wrestling match, nobody's saying a word about that. No, exactly. Well, because. D- does Aja Kong have a history of being careless? Because Nia does. No, that- and that's why I'm like, you know, I get it, but at the same time, like, I don't think this was as bad as people made it out to be. Uh-huh. I mean, you go back and watch that spot with, uh, with, uh, God, I can't remember her name. Went back to Japan. Kyrie, Kyra. Kyrie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I just blanked. When she, she grabbed her and, Kyrie thought she was going to be thrown into the ring. You could tell by her footsteps she thought we're going back in the ring. And instead, Nia point, pointed her toward the steps. Well, of course, she's she doesn't know where she's putting her. Uh, you know, Nia did not push her head. Okay, Nia, the the deal is you put the hand on the back of the person's head, and you're just by touch you're guiding them in the direction you want them to go. It's not like she's going to shove her in the ring, but her direction was leading her to the ring. Instead, she in the, in mid angle stopped and pointed her toward the steps. Well, of course it's going to end really badly because you may say you're a trained worker but you're horribly dangerous and that was a terrible thing to do. I mean, mm. my god. Yeah. And I mean, the, you won't get any defense in in saying that Nia's not careless. She's absolutely careless. Right. But at the same time, if we're booking her to be this big monster, let her hit people with nasty bumps. Like this is stuff that we see Lance do to like Marco every week on AEW. <laughs> <It's like laughs> <getting a puppy. laughs> Come on. Yeah. The thing is, like, remember when Seth went through that thing where like he didn't it was like Bala, Cena, Sting. People now are like, oh well, he's, he's an unsafe like this happened. Like, yes, I know it's slightly different situations, but I think a lot of people want to give Naira a hard time just for the sake of it. And like you say, like the women are just as capable of taking some big bumps and stuff as the guys are. And so, I don't know. Well, she uh, is I agree. <laughs> yeah, she uh, I, and I've I've advocated for the idea of take her off TV and don't put her in NXT. Take her off TV, period, and work with her. It's yeah. obvious you've invested money. It's obvious you think a lot of her because of the family. And I totally get it. You want her to be something she's not. And no matter how many times you want her to be that, she's not that. Stop making her something she's not. For God's sake, listen to everybody telling you she's not what you think she is. Mm -hmm. So get her off TV and work with her. Put her with the best you have. Give her six months and then put her back in the ring. And if she continues to be dangerous, listen, cut your losses and be done because she's not getting this. At some point, you're not getting this. I mean, Mm -hmm. not everybody's cut out for this. I mean, we've seen family members before try this. 
and they they just they don't have the aptitude for it. I don't know. Sorry if she has the aptitude for this. I don't know if it if A clicks with B, clicks with C, clicks with D in her head. I don't know if it is. And if I'm wrong, I'll eat my words if she gets tremendously better. But I I don't know. I don't yeah. see it right now, you know. How about we move on to something fun to talk about? Do Y'all it. Want- <laughs> Good. Reigns versus KO last man standing. Oh. Yeah. I'm excited for this. Yeah, I am too. I've got what my KO think? shirt on. I love the guy. He's not winning, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. KO's going to do. K- KO's going to have a mental spot, isn't he? Because yeah. that's what he likes doing. He likes throwing himself off high objects, buildings, structures, <laughs> and right. it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be really fun, but he's not winning. <laughs> no, Phil, that's does he have a chance at all? I don't like about it is it's pretty predictable. Um, but they're going to have a fantastic match. These two are going to knock it out the park. Um, but, yeah, Roman's winning this thing. <laughs> he's, heading to, he's heading to WrestleMania. Sorry, Smarks. He's, he's going to be in the main event, just like always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's this whole freaking company. Man, what a tremendous change we've seen in the past year. This guy was the most hated person that that company, I don't know, has ever employed. But, man, he was up there. People are just, and through no fault of his own, he's just doing what he's told. Man, what a turnaround, dude. This is what he should have been doing the moment the shield split up. My yeah. God. You know? Yeah. And I was listening to a soundbite of Busted Open where every, every, the veterans, and all due respect to the veterans on that show, much love for them. Uh, but they're crapping on fans that had that opinion. It's like, well, you can't rewind. Why even talk about it? Because we want to talk about stuff. Because, you know, we've seen this company over the years do things, and, and a whole bunch of us are going, yeah, but you could have done this. And then a year later, they do that. And you're like, you could have done that last year. But, you know. Yeah, you you can't have it both ways with that kind of stuff. You can't say, oh, they did it right now, so don't mention the stuff earlier. I mean, continuity is what made Kofi Mania a thing. Like, you can't be like, oh, well, they finally got it right with Kofi, so let's let's forget the 11 years that they didn't get it right. The the story told is predicated on the 11 years before. (laughs) So. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That should feed into the story that, you know, I mean, if you people hated me and booed me and all I tried to do is make you happy and look what you look how you treated me like a second class citizen, Mm -hmm. man, that's yeah, that's a great point. Cherie with a pro wrestling fan perspective on this. Kaya would have a chance if it was one on one match, which it never is. And Cherie, I know, you know, you get this, but she's got a point from a wrestling fan perspective. Kaya doesn't have a chance. He doesn't have a prayer. Because Roman's got backup. And Owens, baby face, nice guy, family guy. I love my kid. I love my wife. But yet no one ever comes to, hey, I, Owens, it's not fair you're getting screwed. Let me give you a hand. So how come, you know what I mean? Logic says maybe some. I'll go give Kevin a, some help tonight. But, like, it's not going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of the baby faces have friends. That we know that in WWE. All the heels have all the friends. So. <laughs> True. <laughs> but... Oh man, I'm just sitting here thinking, thinking of Reigns. Like him winning this match isn't isn't gonna be the big moment of the night. Like I, he know we know he's gonna win this match. But if Daniel wins the rumble, and Roman comes out and spears him right afterwards, mm. make it happen, WWE. That's the oh heel moment God. of the night. Make it happen. Do <laughs> it. And and Daniel wins the title at WrestleMania. Mm. If you yeah. go that route, oh, no, I'm man. sorry. If you go that route, that's what you're leading because it has to end big, right? Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know if they're going to take the title off him. I think he's going to keep the title after Mania. Hmm. I don't Could know. Be. Troy, your boys are in the house. Postman Pierce will try to assist Owens <laughs> failing in doing so, though. We call him Postman Pierce because months and months ago, was it Vince asked him to deliver a message to like I think it was Roman or the Fiend or something for a match, and he had him dressed up in a postman outfit. So from then on, we just <laughs> called him Postman Pierce. <laughs> great, I forgot about that. That's great. Uh, and you know they talked about why well, Adam Pierce was a former wrestler, he hasn't wrestled in six years, but he was an accomplished wrestler. He's a former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I wish somebody on that brand would at yeah. least you're going to acknowledge great. Impact, but you're not going to say anything about. Come on, you know. So is our truth. They never say that. Yeah. Never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never. Exactly. Yeah. They've never mentioned it. Man, I, I could go off on a rant about how truth they've never done. Oh, my God. That's a whole different show. I love truth. 
Uh, Sandy from Germany, Nakamura. When it, dude, Nakamura's heating up. Man. We kind of left him out. What do you think? Is he face now or not? He's yes. got his old music back. He's definitely face, isn't he? But then he's what happened with him and Cesaro? Are they done now or are they a heel face tag team? I don't know. They have to break ties first, you think? Yeah. I I don't I don't think he's gonna win the rumble. I would absolutely love that. He was one of my favorite rumble winners of the last decade or so. I just think it is massively tragic that he did not win the main the match at Mania and that they decided to go in a different direction with him. But out of mm-hmm. any Japanese star they've had, this guy has it. He had the charisma. He's a yep. he's a star. They should have pushed this guy to the moon when they had the chance. Um I don't think they're going to correct that. I love the idea of him winning two Rumbles because no Japanese man has ever done that. Mm-hmm. And I think that would be a, a fantastic accomplishment for him. Uh, but I don't see it. No. I mean, they're reaching into India. I, I assume we're going to see NXT India at some point, which, I mean, I'm good with that. It makes sense. Uh, the whole COVID thing will be tricky, but I'm sure that's where they're trying to head next, uh, obviously. So I'm okay with that. They They've... They they've done the whole Middle East thing with the with the Saudi stuff, you know. No disrespect to those people over there, but wow, that government, yikes! That's a whole different conversation, right? So it's obvious <laughs> that they're trying to go international, but yet Phil just said you've got a Japanese-born star who could more than carry either one of those titles, and yes. like, why don't you just pull the trigger? What are you waiting mm-hmm. on? Yeah, I don't. I, I feel like me- he's getting a title match at like Elimination Chamber. Whatever the next one is, it's going to fast lane or elimination chamber. He'll get yeah. a title match then. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because I think it's off the back of that gauntlet match, wasn't it? And deservedly he was the winner instead of Absolutely. Pierce. Yeah. So he's due a title match. It won't be a mania. He won't win the rumble, but yeah. And I love not I love Nakamura to death. I, I think he's great. Um so you see the banner. Um lots of people split on this. I'm going to be honest with you. Goldberg wins. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have a a harder head choice here or, or a wand or wackadoodle. This is Goldberg's going over. He's going to get that freaking belt. Never held the WWE Championship before. Drew's going to drop it again, this time to the veteran. Uh, they're leading up to Goldberg defending it at WrestleMania. I, and that's an unpopular take. I really believe that's what they're going to do. Yeah. I don't want you to be right, but I feel like I you're right. I don't mm-hmm. I don't feel like there's anything you can do with Goldberg as champion other than give Biggie that match. Other I don't see any other direction to go in because if you take the title off off of Drew, who is the next face up to challenge Goldberg on Raw? Keith Lee. That's not a match that they believe in. If if mm-hmm. you're Keith Lee versus Goldberg at Mania, Goldberg's gonna win that match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, you make a great point. If you, No matter who you put the belt on, no matter what brand or company or show or whatever, who's the, who are the challengers? Who are the guys that are going to take them to the limit, sell some tickets, put some eyes on the product, put butts in seats? Um, yeah, who you got? And they don't have anybody but Drew. Like, ugh. I, I, don't, I don't know. The only other person on Raw that I could see is maybe if Samoa Joe challenges him, he comes off, off out of the booth and challenges him. I don't believe that's going to happen. Mm. I don't know. There's no good circumstances to Goldberg winning the belt, but that hasn't stopped them from putting the belt on him before. So mm-hmm. Goldberg know. Goldberg wins the belt. Joe wins the Rumble. I I would mind that. That would be way out of left field. <laughs> um, I kind of have a feeling Drew's going to win this. This could be just me hoping that WWE learned their lesson. Um, mm. But I can actually feel it. <laughs> them learning their lesson. <laughs> no, no. They haven't learned their lesson with the fiend because they're making the same mistakes with Alexa. So yeah. I don't know. Uh I like I like your optimism though. <laughs> I want to hope Goldberg is lo- losing this match, but I think I think Goldberg's gonna win. I think you're right, Tom. Mm. Uh I've got a third guest star on the show today. So there you go. My DOG is showing up. He's right behind <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, I was telling Phil, man, he last time Phil was on, he got his way into the shot like he was t- totally behind my chair. And then <laughs> last 10 minutes, he stretched and then laid way over so everybody could see him. I'm like, uh-huh, <laughs> we'll show off. Um, I mean, every time Bill comes back, he gets a belt. And listen, here's the funny part, kids. Yes, it's entirely possible to criticize the product and not criticize the man behind the product or the man behind the gimmick. This is nothing on Bill. 
if anybody out there thinks that Bill went to them and said, I'll come back if it's a title match and I want a belt and I want, come on. Bill's going to get paid like anyone else they bring on board, like anyone else they use now. I mean, the idea they pitched to him, he liked it. Now, if they pitch him an idea without a title, would he like it? Well, I don't know. It's it's Bill. I can't answer for him. I don't lay this at Bill's door. Anyone bashing Bill because, well, that Goldberg, he just has to have stuff. No, he does. Shut up. That's like people getting mad at Brock. Well, Brock, he'll, he'll come on. Shut up. It's not Brock's oh. choice. Oh, man. How do you feel about that? If Goldberg wins this and then afterwards it hits the dunk, dunk, dunk and we're Brock hopping. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> I'm excited for that because, <laughs> yeah. Wait. Yeah. Phil, you did something. Goldberg wins the belt. Brock wins the Rumble. No, 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 no. Phil, Please you no. spoke it in the bean. No. Shut up. This is all your fault. This is no. much worse than what I said earlier. <laughs> no. <laughs> much worse than what I said earlier. Oh, yeah. It's it, You know, people get mad. I, that Brock, that Brock, I hate that guy. What? What? He's just doing what he's told. What do you mean? Like, oh, my God, people people need to aim their anger at Vince. And then people today need to aim their anger at Phil because Phil spoke it in a being. It's Phil's fault if this happens. Everybody Brock remember that. Rubble. I'm just going to disable my Twitter and everything else. I'm just going to cut everything off. <laughs> you better. You better because I'm going to go on immediately when it happens and says this is all Phil's fault. Everybody bash him right now. Yeah, I think Brock is gone for a while, though. I don't think he'll be back at any time soon, at least. Mm. Um. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're not going to do the Raw and SmackDown takeaways. We've covered a bunch of that stuff already. There's your Royal Rumble card, kids. How's everybody feeling about it? Great, awesome, capital. Everybody's feeling magnificent. No one really is. Uh, but it's going to be a show. There's my positive outlook. Hey, Royal Rumble's probably going to be a show, and it's probably going to be on the network, and I, it's probably going to have to start at eight or something. There's my positive. I hate to be that negative dude. I really do. People think I love it. I don't love it. I'm just saying, I maybe when I watch it, I'll I'll get myself more into it and get more hyped. I just need to I need to hang out with like Mojo because man, Mojo doesn't get hyped. He's staying Where's hyped. Mojo? He's, he's, he's staying hyped somewhere, Phil. That's what he's doing. So there you go. Uh that's my comedy on that. AEW headlines. We don't have to spend a ton of time on this. We've already been going an hour. What do you want? It's a Royal Rumble preview show. But I know Timothy Gonzalez is going to be very happy because he's only here for the AEW content. Timothy, you're welcome. Um, so the biggest headline I got for you guys, and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about here. What about that promo with Sting and Darby? Did that thing feel weird to anybody except me? Was it just a little, uh, it's weird? Or did everybody love it? I haven't seen it yet, so I can't comment on it. Oh, boo Troy. Oh. Everyone boo Troy. <laughs> uh i don't the, the sting and darby stuff is just there for me at the moment like i feel like you got to get to the destination at some point they've been we've been hyping this thing up for a while like i feel like we've got to get to whatever this is going to be i mean they've already announced the match but now that's all the way next month so <laughs> i feel like let's just get this match done let's get let's get to whatever this is going to be and get over with it um i'm not totally excited about sting wrestling uh but you know, I am tentatively wait trying to see what's gonna happen. Um I think uh Taz and uh Team Taz stole this segment. Um hit Taz's son, um Hook. Hook is fantastic. His just <laughs> he's got it, man. Just the when he jumped in a uh, vendor's face and then threw him into the guardrail. Hook's the guy, he's a goon. <laughs> 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 he's a goon i love that uh so i'm i mean troy this has to be a cinematic match right you can't do this live action as they say on nah. tv i mean nah. come on right what a, protect, what a protect sting and yeah they couldn't have him come out put him in like a live tv match and then he get injured and then there'd be absolute uproar it's got to be cinematic sting versus taz hook on a forklift match <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> they can call it a hook lift. How about that? They'll call it a hook lift. Yeah. God, if if no one knows what that reference is, then you obviously never watch WCW. Count yourself among the lucky ones and never watch that company at its worst. <laughs> Man, it got bad. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shane says Moxley dropping Omega was great. Kenny took that freaking paradigm shift. 
like he died. That thing was a beautiful, wasn't it? My God, amazing so. Yeah. <laughs> and and how dropped him is the word because like John had just turned around. The timing was perfect. Oh, there you are. Bam, dropped him. Like that quick. It was great. I was all about that. Um, speaking of, uh, and I don't have a banner for this, um, but let's talk about John's promo because uh, they're heading toward beach break. Beach break. Because by God, why not? Did you notice that John um, referenced one of his WWE promos in this thing? Tell me. Remind me. Um, he said, like, I like my, my beer cold. I like uh, my coffee black. And it's all reference to a mock, to a, um, Ambrose promo when he was in the Shield. Oh, really? Interesting. Somebody I didn't pick put it, it online. Somebody put, like, the side-by-sides of them of him saying it online somewhere. That's clever. I got to look that up because that, uh, that's great stuff. And then he, he, he had the line about, I like my sex in the mornings because it gets the day off to a good start. You got to believe it. His wife's sitting back going, oh, what did he say? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not like she's a home and not a known personality, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, everything he does is – I want you to spend a minute, and we've gone long here like crazy, but uh, spend a minute and think about this. And, and Troy, me and Phil talked about this at, ad nauseum. You had this guy in your locker room for how many years? This is the guy you had. You had him with a potted plant. You had him squirting mustard and ketchup on Randy Orton. You had him dunking water on Seth Rollins' head for charity. You had him coming um, out dressed like Bane. Uh, the stinky people. And he got injected in his butt. Oh, man. The guy cutting these promos is the same guy he was then. He still was capable of doing that. That's who you had in your locker room. And you never freaking used him. On what planet... Does that make any sense to you guys at all? The mind boggles. It's just, it's unreal. And it's it's interesting you said that I think it's on this day, like what, two years or so ago, was when WWE announced that he wouldn't be re-signing with them. And that was one of the first times they kind of openly put out, this person will not be re-signing. That was two years ago today. But it's it's crazy how a talent like that goes completely wasted and like you said you've named just a few of those those things there where he, he was thrown into a ridiculous situation and he must like thinking what am i doing what yeah. is this just oh the frustration yeah. <laughs> phil talk about his appearance on jericho's podcast because it was awesome well you i mean it was a lot of stuff we already knew mm -hmm. um but I think a lot of this stuff in the last year has just shown that if WWE just cuts back their roster a little bit and doesn't hoard talent like they do and let people just go and do what they want to do with other companies, the entire industry would be better off because of it. Yeah. And that has been seen with Moxley. Um, my God, look at what Perra Deanna Perrazzo is doing right now. I mean, mm -hmm. just let wrestlers be who they want to be and just let them be themselves and i think that is the big story of all of this moxley stuff you don't have to script things from everyone some people yeah. need the script but not everyone needs it mm -hmm. and i'm sorry but if they need a script you don't need them i mean yeah, i mean well, it depends on who who it is um does it really though i mean if if you can't be well-rounded and do everything i'm not saying you have to yeah. be flair but my god you got to be at least capable of doing it right you should be at least capable to, of cutting a promo but yeah like mm. if you have like specific angles that you want them to do and you have certain things that you want them to do then yeah some people need that script and motivation yeah. um but you know absolutely it, all of the overly scripted promos are not a need like it, you everybody should be able to cut a promo and back in the day when vince was buying up all the territories and over the years, people have made apologies for that, talking about, oh, well, Tom, things were changing. Vince was thinking long term. And what if he hadn't done it? The territories would have died anyway, Tom, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, but can you not see a correlation what he's doing now compared to what he did then? Like yep. to, Phil, to Phil's point just now, it was, you know, by hoarding up this talent, you're not letting them be who they could, really could be. You're not letting them. Yeah, you're not. You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're strangling them. And that's part of the problem is that we don't get to see and we don't get to be entertained because there's people in that locker room today who are like, I wish I could just talk. Can, can I just go out there and talk? 
no, uh-uh. you, you know, gotta go out there and dance or some, shit. you know, whatever. I almost, <laughs> almost curse. That's that get me in trouble. But uh, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, it's just hoarding yeah, talent because that's what he does. It's, it's a shame, man. Yeah, and that I mean that takes it back to the Charlotte thing because it's like you have so many women on that roster. You have so many women on NXT in general, and your whole play right now is well, Charlotte Flair, everyone. <laughs> okay. I mean, Charlotte's great, but I mean, you've got so many people. I mean, the fact that we have not seen EO and Oscar wrestle one on one anywhere and it's, they're not planning that match, it's wild. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's uh, mad. it is mad. That's the best word for it, Troy. Um, yeah. Since we're, I, I feel there's probably more AEW stuff we could talk about. And folks, if you want to quiz us on it, you can. Let's get to the open floor. This is whatever you guys want to talk about because I saw a great comment here. Mark says, Why isn't TNA pushing for Moose versus Swan? That match is perfect. The buildup is there. The story is there. Go with it. Phil, you're our impact guy. What do you think about that? I think they are holding off because I think they are going to make this a triple threat match. I've been guessing that for a while. I could be wrong. Um, but watching the big six-man tag match, they put Moose over huge in that match. Um, and I think that was for the purpose of having both titles in the, on the line at some point with Omega so Omega can take both titles and unify the titles. Mm. Mm. What do you think about that, Troy? Uh, that sounds like a I don't know kind of grunt. What do you think? I don't know about oh I don't know I know Kenny's got this whole belt collector thing going, hasn't he? But oh I love Moose. He's so good. And and there's talk of him and, and Rich Swan, but like you said, like it feels like it could be going more to a triple threat. Um just give Moose all the belts. Deserves it. <laughs> just give Moose all of the belts. <laughs> he uh I saw him at, I was trying to queue up the video on my phone. I was trying to find it, but I saw him in a company called PWX, which is uh down in the Carolinas here, and he, I forget who he worked, and his chop, Ooh. my God, it rang through that little building, like echoed, like mad, like unbelievable echo, and my, my kids sitting there going, oh my God, like you could feel it in your seat, so I've always been a fan of this guy. Um, take a sec here, uh, 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 Phil, and talk to me about uh, Rich Swan, man, like, I mean, uh, we're looking to Rich versus Kenny Omega, I think we're going to get to that so i mean talk about a guy that came a long way from almost career ending injury this guy yeah uh was an ankle injury right yeah um almost done and rich is fantastic i've been saying rich is fantastic ever since the cruiserweight classic even before that um with the the, uh inner city machine guns with ricochet guys just great um moves well wrestles well I, just fantastic seeing him as world champion and getting that big win really happy for him and that's kind of why i feel like if they do go the route of taking the title off him for this omega thing you can't just have omega just beat him clean like you can't just have all of that lead up to kenny coming in and beating him and that's mm-hmm. kind of why i feel like they're leading to a triple threat match because at least that way like moose is the heel in this you can always have kenny pin moose and win yeah. both titles yeah. Um, and then come back and give us Swan versus Omega for a unified title later. That's uh yeah, he's uh he seems to be in a great spot with that title. I think it was smart to put it on him. Um Troy, how do you feel about Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan? I mean, Kenny's going over. So like you know, what's um, your take on that? Uh I'm gonna say something that a lot of people will probably disagree with. I just don't really like Kenny. I don't get Kenny Omega. I think he's a little bit overrated, in my opinion. I just all I ever hear is Kenny's this, Kenny's this, Kenny's that, and I'm just like, I've watched a few of your bits, and I just find you a bit irritating. And I'm just, I'm not saying he's not good. Like just for me, like I just don't get him. Um, but it's it's inevitable, isn't it? He's he's like yeah. Thanos, of the Infinity Gauntlet. He's going around, he's collecting the titles. That's it. He's going to snap the finger. Yeah. Um, yeah, it will happen. But I, I think they've, they've done such a good job of kind of elevating Rich Swan to that position. And it would seem harsh to him to have Kenny just come in and beat him clean. There needs to be something else in there for him to kind of come out still looking credible, still looking strong. 
Uh, and yeah, having Moose take the pin doesn't hurt him too much either. And there's plenty they can continue on with afterwards between two of them, three of them. So, what are you gonna, what are you gonna hit us with, Phil? Yeah, I mean, to me personally, like I love Omega just because of all the New Japan stuff, and I can get. I think one of the AEW's biggest failings is they don't get people that didn't watch New Japan to understand some of the things about these guys that their core fans like. Mm-hmm. And for Kenny, Kenny's whole thing is he's a he's a massive dork. And it's like you're supposed <laughs> to find him irritating. You're supposed to think he's annoying because he is annoying. And I think that's why he works so great as a heel and not a not a good guy because he's obnoxious. And I think all of the stuff he's doing with Callis works that much better because they're both two big goofs. <laughs> uh, Troy, to your credit, I, I get where you're coming from. I, I've never been of the opinion that he's top five best in the world. I'm still not. Mm. I, I get, and but I agree with Phil too. The stuff he did in Japan with Okada is tremendous. Um, mm. But, you know, there again, he worked Okada. I'm saying, um, but uh, it's the over-the-top theatrical stuff. And I, a lot of, a lot of other guys are doing this too, where they'll, they'll just point I'm going to point. I'm going to run over here. See, I'm going to tell everybody I'm running over here. And that's what he does. I'm like, if you're working a mega, from a common sense perspective, wouldn't you go, you ain't running anywhere. Pull him by the back of the hair, pull him down the mat. I'm saying like that idea. And it's something that's worked its way into the business. And that's, I'm not going to rant too much, but this idea of the Lucha pass where the dude runs past you to go bounce off the ropes you just had him right in front of you. Why are you letting him run past you? It's that, <laughs> oh, well, Tom, it's exciting, Tom. The fans, it's the style. Shut. I had a wrestler tell me it's the style. To, shut up. In a, in a real world fight, if you wanted to bust somebody's face, you wouldn't let him run past you. You'd be like, come back here. You know, yeah. I don't know. That's just yeah. me being technical. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I, I get that Kenny is very kitsch, and I get that that is part of his appeal to some people, but that is also why some people don't like him. Um, mm. and but man, just the idea with him winning both those uh impact titles and unifying them, having a triple A belt over it like Ultimo Dragon, and walking into New Japan to challenge Kota, give Ooh. it to me. I want it right now. Give and the great, the great thing, <laughs> the great thing about that is no one's ever done it. Uh, and if everybody now, see, here's the thing, Phil, can you get all these companies on the same page? Where there's not that old fashioned, what if they screw us, Don? Well, I don't know who Don is. What if they screw us? What if we get screwed here? Because that's why none of these companies cooperate 30 years ago, was because mm-hmm. it was 40 years ago, whatever it's been. It's like, we can't trust these guys because they'll stab us in the back. Can you get all these guys on the same page? Everybody involved? Uh, I don't know, but clearly the wrestlers want it. Um, I don't know if you saw that Coda was tweeting something last night about it. Um, Man, I think that's the storyline. You've got to head toward if you're gonna do open the forbidden door, like <laughs> I think Kenny's the guy to do it. Mm. Yeah, I uh I, I agree with that. I think we could see it happen. Timothy was a big one. Phil Lindsay and Troy Grant, give me your take on private party. I've been a fan since the first show on AEW started. My question is to y'all, is it time for them to put the title belt on them? I guess are they better as baby faces or heels? I feel like this is still a developing story with them, right? Yeah, yeah, too soon. Uh, uh, I think what they're doing with Matt is awesome. I think them turning heel was great. I thought that was one of the highlights of that episode of Dynamite. Um, I think they lost something when Top Flight came because Top Flight became the new kids on the block when yeah. Private Party was already the new kids on the block. So <laughs> they kind of lost something, but making them heel and differentiating them has been great for them. Yeah, Making Matt their manager and having them on impact is going to, do a lot for them. They're probably going to lose that match to the Good Brothers, but it puts them on a path to do something else bigger later this year. What do you think, I, Roy? I concur. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Um, great turning them here, and like you say, with the other guys coming in and, and them no longer being that kind of top baby facing new kids on the block, whatever. Um, but I think it's a bit early from to have the belts yet. Yeah, I agree with that. And there's moments of this thing feeling weird because, like, I don't – are they turning heel? Well, they don't seem to like what Matt's doing. But, no, maybe they seem to like it. So, I, you know. Uh, but there again, as I've said before on this show, a lot of what we look at from this company, unfortunately, is jaded and shaded by stuff we've seen for 30 years from Vince. So 
I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because they've, yeah. I can't ever to this day, I can't ever say I came away from an AEW event going, eh, like, or, man, that didn't come through. No, I can still find something. It was like, man, that didn't work. But man, I see the effort. I see what they were going for and maybe they fell short, but okay. I have definitely come away from a WWE event going, God, man, that was, that was embarrassing. Why'd they put that on TV? Like, yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? So yeah. uh, let's see. You can always count on Ray on some good old school hip hop questions. EPMD <laughs> or Run DMC. And Phil, I guess he says, did you put Kobe in your top five? Uh, EPMD and Run DMC is not a fair thing to hit me with. Okay. Because I love both. Um, I, I don't know. My heart says Run DMC. But I did meet Darren McDaniel at a comic book convention one time. And he is as cool as you could imagine he would be. He had a Guns N' Roses t-shirt on and he talked to me and uh, my kid and a friend of mine. And he was, I had a Deadpool shirt on. So we talked comic books and Guns N' Roses for like 10 minutes and I didn't get anything signed. He wasn't even done setting his table up, but he was nice enough to talk and took a picture with us. And I'm like, I spent the next week telling everybody, dude, I met DMC. And people are like, who? <laughs> I'm like, if you don't know who, like, and I was shocked that people around me, who, who's that? Like, DMC is the place to be. What do you mean you don't know who I'm talking about? Anyway, <laughs> so Phil, <laughs> is Kobe in your top five? Is Kobe in my top five? That's a tough one. Um, I think he has to be. Um, in terms of like all time greats, he has to be in the top five. Um, still below um, the greatest of all time from the city of Chicago, Michael Jordan, but still in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, what do you think? Uh, are you a basketball guy? Uh, I used to watch basketball a lot when I was younger, not so much anymore. Um, but I certainly put Kobe in my top five. You know, uh, for for uh, WWE, we're talking about going international and stuff, and 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 NBA has got you know international players. Obviously, am I drawing a blank, Phil? You're more up to date on the league today than I am. Are there British? It, am I? I can't think of any British players that Troy. Do you know of any any like? Oh, there's a hometown guy, or there's a home country guy. I can't think of anybody. Am I missing somebody? Uh, I can't think of any. That just hit me. I don't know if I've ever even thought about that before. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's somebody I'm forgetting about that might have been born over in the UK, but they mm-hmm. are like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a, a black ball player from there that is born in the UK that I'm drawing a blank on. I just yeah, I don't, I sure. got, I don't know, dude. That's, that's something interesting to look up. Um, we're about to take a home kids. Let's take a few more so we can get out of here. Mark says CM Punk would have been better off signing with AEW. CM Punk is better off doing whatever makes him happy. And I love punk. I will be a punk fan till the end. Uh, he did it his way and didn't ask for any permission and didn't make any apologies and good on him. Um, I punk saved his body. Punk saved his life essentially. And if punk can wake up now and have a reasonable level of pain where he can still enjoy his life, because I don't know of any wrestler that spent 20 plus years in the business and doesn't wake up with something hurting. That's reality. But if he's fairly healthy and happy, go with God and let that guy live his life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, to me, I feel like he's been saying for a while, I'm not mad at this company anymore. I'm over it. Fans got to do the same thing. He's moved on. It's time for everybody else to move on to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. And I, I had dreams of seeing him back and I would love to have seen him back. I still would, but I mean, the offers have been made. He's politely said no. Um, I, I think he'll wrestle again at some point, but I think for now we've got to let him make that decision. Mm-hmm. Robbie says, since pandemic hit, is WWE still going to Saudi Arabia to do pay-per-views? If so, how will that work? I've heard nothing announced. <laughs> two two words, kids, and it's not hard garbage. It's blood money. Okay? Yeah. I'm <laughs> isn't sorry. That, isn't that the name of the next pay-per-view over there? Or... Yeah. Oh my God. That's good. Tune in next month to WWE blood money. <laughs> and Vince needs to cut the promo. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> blood money. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't I think mean, they're, yeah, they're, they've cut back their touring schedule, even within the States, haven't they? So there's, they're not going to yeah. fly over there to do it. It's, no. it's too, too costly, too dangerous right now. It'd be crazy to do it. I submit they were crazy to do it before, but what do I know? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Ryan hits us with, uh, would be cool to see his wife now, AJ, in the Royal Rumble. Ryan, I will, and you're right. However, they fired Punk on his wedding day via FedEx. I would never be able to forget that or ever let that go. 
uh, do you think AJ can let that go? I mean, here's the guy you're going to commit the rest of your life to. And she goes, oh, honey, what's that? It's a FedEx package. And he goes, ha, huh, they just fired me. And like, on our wedding day, they do this? Yeah, and that was timed. It was calculated to arrive at his house the, the day it did. Shut up. Don't anybody try to tell me any different. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, if I'm them or anybody related to them, if I'm their mailman, I'm like, I'm not going to go work for them. That's no, it's yeah. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, there you Kevin go. hit with Steve Bucknell of Lakers is British. There you go. S Kevin, well done. Well the done. More you know. <laughs> the more you know. Right, we need the thing, right? Sheree says DeMarcus Cousins is from the UK. I didn't know that. I figured there was somebody that was there you. you go. There you go, man. Well, uh, I think we're almost done, folks. Uh, if everybody had fun today, please tip your waiter on the way out because, man, I enjoyed it. Um, any uh, parting shots from you guys? And, and thank you, as always, for being on the shows. And, man, I got buttons I didn't debut. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I guess I'll save until next week. What's yeah. up with me having buttons? You know, I'm trying to build something. What's up with me having buttons that I didn't debut? I mean, what? really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. You know what's good about that button? If anybody ever disagrees with me, I can just go. What? What? <laughs> what? No, wait, one more. What? Man. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. It's my favorite one. Those eyes when he's like that. Oh, my God. It's good stuff. <laughs> so uh, uh, you guys give everybody your parting shots. Where can they find you online? And what are you up to right now? And let's, let's school the audience. Uh, you can find me at PhilDO616 on Twitter. And you can find my writing at Police Report. Troy, what you got, brother? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Facebook and Twitter at TroyXL85, or you can give a uh, weekly wrestling podcast a listen, uh, which is the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. There you go. It's a good show. It's a fun show, man. I enjoy listening to it. Um, so Shannon, who's one of my favorite people, says, Tom, you and Phil did a great job on the AW podcast. That begs a reminder to everyone watching. Tom Clark 6M podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday. If you're not listening, man, are you missing out? Troy's been on the show. Phil's on the show a bunch. You're missing out if you don't watch it. This is where the cool kids hang out. And today, after we sign off, let's say 135-ish, 140-ish, uh, go over to Tom Clark's Facebook page, or Tom Clark 6M podcast page. We're going to give you a preview of next Tuesday's brand new episode. Troy, we got to get you back on that show again very soon. Troy and I did the Christmas episode of Watch Along of Christmas Vacation. It was freaking fun. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So much fun. I've listened to that. I've actually, I did listen to it and watch the movie at the same time. Even though I know everything we said, it was still fun. So, yeah, man. <laughs> there you go. Guys, thanks as always for hanging out, man. I appreciate you guys uh, doing this. Hold tight with me. I'm going to take you off the screen. I'll, I'll say uh, goodbye to you in a bit here. Um, Thanks again, you guys, for hanging out with us today on the main event. Cheers, man. Thanks for having us. Thank you, fellas. Folks, there you go. Uh, Troy Grant, big ups to Troy Grant and Phil Lindsay uh, for hanging out as always. Now my dog's in full effect. You see this? Because there he is. And he's like, finally, it's just me and the and Tom on, on the screen. Never thought those guys would ever leave. Thank God it's just me and him. He's not awake to even appreciate it now. See, it's his moment to shine and he's asleep. What are you going to do? Um, that's it for me, folks. I'm going to get out of here. I want to wish everybody happy Friday as always. Hope you guys have a great freaking weekend. Watch yourself some pro wrestling this weekend, even if you can't go to shows because, you know, pandemic crap. Uh, but stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Wear your mask. Don't free but Don't be a freaking doofus. Wear the mask. Don't listen to stupid politicians who are no longer in office. I don't care who doesn't like what I said. OK, uh, wear the freaking mask. Save a life. Maybe your own. How about that? There's my political crap for today. Let's get out of here, people. Thanks again for watching. See you next week. Tom Clark's main event.